Yes, welcome into Sports Bit. Betty and Inside today, Polly and Teddy, weekend preview edition, big game breakdown, South Regional, UCLA, Kentucky, Butler in North Carolina. Play the day before we get out of here, and we start bad beats, bad bets, bad for the books, great action on Thursday. Arizona blows it. Arizona to win the West. Arizona to win it all. All up in smoke for us. They're playing in San Jose. Final four in Glendale. Up eight with three minutes. They lose the game. Joke job. Uh, I, I mean, I, well, I, I got to give Xavier credit for continuing to play hard. And that's what Xavier does. We talked about it on Sportsbit yesterday. Xavier's going to fight to the final whistle. And they did. But let's be real. Sean Miller, not his best work. Arizona choked that one away. No, that was horrible. Markinen didn't take a shot in the final 11 minutes. Now he's off to the lottery. That's from Jason McIntyre's tweet. And Xavier was 500 to 1 on March 9th. They're in the Elite Eight. They face Gonzaga. The winner's in the Final Four for the first time. Hey, <laughs> kudos. A couple of Catholic schools battling uh, for the right to represent in the Final Four. Musketeers give them all the credit in the world. Again, 500 to 1. This was a team that had a six game losing streak, not like in December or November, in late February. They've come on like a freight train and heck of an end game last night for the Musketeers, although. That wasn't a particularly big decision for the house. There are a couple games, Polly, that were really big decisions for the house, and not all of them in their favor. Yeah, here's a tough beat. Michigan was up three with a minute 40 left. Gave up a basket on a missed free throw, put back by Oregon, and Michigan didn't score the rest of the game. The Ducks move on to the Elite Eight. Yeah, and this is something, and this is going to be one of those shows where I'm like, this is what we said. If you watch sports, but this is what we said. If you watch sports, but you knew the Wolverines' vulnerability on the defensive glass, something we talked about several times in the show over the course of the last couple of months. Well, that little weakness ended up being the difference between victory and defeat. The margin was rager thin. <laughs> of course, a uh, bad job by Oregon at the end. They had fouled to give Altman one of them foul, and Michigan got off the shot uh, to win the game. But Tyler Dorsey looking like attorney M. OP candidate, 71 points in three games, 11 of 16 from three-point range. Tough, tough beat if you had the Wolverines last night. Uh, good for you if you had the Ducks. That would have been a horrible loss on, on Ennis if Walton hits that shot because you're not supposed to give up a shot in that situation with nine seconds and two fouls to give. Uh, Altman told him to foul. He didn't do it, but he got a good look but missed. Great job by Altman and the Ducks. Bad for the book. That was a great game, Paul. I mean, that was as entertaining a basketball game as you'll ever see. Both teams back and forth with the runs. High level of basketball in that one. Yep, so was the Arizona game because they let them play. They didn't do that in the Gonzaga games. Gonzaga, West Virginia lands on three. Bad for the books. 27 fouls in the first half. They were calling a foul on every possession. West Virginia shot 26%, but they had the lead late till Matthews buried the three. Yeah, and this is a really bad result for the house because there were three and a halfs out there early in the week. There were fours out there early in the week. There were two and a halfs out there on game day. Every decent better either won or pushed regardless of which side they had. And if you lost this game, if you had Gonzaga and West Virginia and you lost, your handicapping skills may be fine. You need to work on your betting skills because it's not the type of game you're supposed to lose. And yeah, uh, I mean, uh, with three minutes left, West Virginia had 21 points off of turnovers, 21 points from the three throw line, and 10 points in their half court offense. I mean, that half court offense was ugly. They hit the two late threes, Miles and Carter, uh, but then that final possession. What do you think of that final possession, Polly? Uh, with the Mountaineers bumbling away their final chance. It was like the game, unwatchable. I had to look away. They're out of timeouts, and they can't even get a, get a look on the final on the final uh, shot there, although they got uh, missed air ball, rebound, miss, rebound, and then they can't even get the look off at the buzzer. Incredible. See, if you had the three and a half in your pocket, that's a dream scenario, okay? You don't want overtime. Overtime, it's a crapshoot. And you certainly don't want to miss in a foul, where you're going to lose that game with, you know, two seconds left or five seconds left. So the fact that the Mountaineers botched it, if you had them on a the money line, didn't do you any good. But if you had them plus the points, especially if you shopped around and had the plus three and a half, that was an optimal result. But that side turned out pretty bad for the house. But the total, 
turned out pretty good for the house, Polly. Yeah, that was a 37-second possession that went for nothing. Uh, the total was bet up from 146.5 to 150. Would have stayed under even with overtime uh, in that one. 51 fouls called, still never had a chance in that one. And when is, I mean, Gonzaga's in the Elite Eight. They haven't played well at all yet. Williams Goss was terrible again. 10 points, 2 of 10 shooting. Not much out of Karnowski. Matthew saved their bacon. And now that all the pressure's on Gonzaga, well, they'll be favored and expected to beat Xavier. And few can try finally get him to the Final Four. Yeah, well, think about it. I mean, West Virginia had 16 more field goal attempts and only three fewer free throw attempts. So they had basically 14 and a half more, plus 14 and a half net shots. Of course, they only made 16 of those 60. And when you have the ball and the lead in the final minute, plus three is supposed to be good. But as you mentioned, Jordan Matthews, not one, not two. He hit three huge triples. All three of them were huge. The last one was the backbreaker. One of them was a four-point play. Uh, for, uh, you know, it was uh, the difference maker, obviously, in that ball game. Uh, Javon Carter did what he could for the Mountaineers. Four of nine for three-point lanes, but the rest of the team just one of 14 from beyond the arc. This is what you're supposed to do, Arizona. You're favored. You blow a team out when you're expected to win. Bad for the books. Kansas sped up to four, five. There was a, a six out there. Many books had their biggest liability on Kansas, and they score 98 points. What a freight train this, this program has been. 190 and 98 points so far in the three tourney wins. And when you think about how that game turned, I mean, Purdue was shooting lights out early. They're up, what, 33 to 25. There's six and a half left in the first half. And that 33 to 25 became, they were down by seven by halftime. A 22 7 Jayhawks run. And that was just the tip of the iceberg once the second half tipped. It got ugly for the Boilermakers. But as we'll show you later in the show, winning a big blowout in the Sweet 16, not always a good team for teams moving forward. Bad for the books. Raptors heat under 203. Bet from 203 down to 200. They are catching up and figuring out the Raptors with the new defense. Yeah, sure. And even without Ibaka uh, last night, uh, the money still came on the under. And, of course, that was a never-in-doubt outcome. Toronto playing under on a very consistent basis. And the betting markets have been lagging behind. All right, there's another team tanking, the Suns. They started the youngest starting five in NBA history, 21 years old, the average age. And they, they bet the Nets up to six. They blew out the Suns at home. Yeah, I mean, Phoenix in full-on tank mode now. You know, Tyson Chandler sitting, Eric Bledsoe sitting, Brandon Knight. They're all out for the year. They're like, yeah, your last dozen games, you guys just sit. We're going to see what we have. And their second leading remaining scorer, TJ Warren, got the night off in Brooklyn. All the money came on the Nets. The first back-to-back -back wins for the Nets all year, Pauly. And, by the way, in the last 10 games, this bottom feeder, 5-5 five and five straight up, 8-2 and two against the number. All right, one bad bet in the NBA. Heavy steam on the Clippers. Sped up from three and a half to five and a half at Dallas. Clippers lose outright. Yeah, and the Mavs uh, have been <laughs> like the Pacers. The Pacers are the best win-loss, win-loss. You bet on them off a loss, and you bet against them off a win. Dallas, in the last six games, they've had three ugly blows. 20 points, 22 points, 25 points. Just ugly games. And following all three of those, a straight-up win and cover in their next contest, two of them. As underdogs. How about legal sports report on Twitter? Australia's going to ban in-play? Yeah, there's uh, baffling stuff uh, going on with the in-play wagering in Australia. And now they're setting up a government commission and saying what new sports can be included as sporting events. They want to ban esports betting. It's not permitted at a federal level. Uh, you know, the situation with legal legalization and legality in Australia is, how do we phrase this politely? Uh, the, the only word I can, that I can think of, Paulie, starts with a cluster. Uh, it, it's not worked out. It's, it's, it's insanity right there. And what's happening is that now you're getting government regulators who don't understand sports betting involved in the nitty-gritty decisions. That's not necessarily a good thing. Up next, big game breakdown. South Regional, Kentucky, UCLA, and North Carolina, Butler. Plus an early look at Elite Eight and some Elite Eight spreads how teams do typically in the Elite Eight over the years as well. On Sports Bit, betting insight today on SBRPicks.com. Go to SBRodds.com. Browse, compare, and shop live odds available at top online sportsbooks.
Back on Sports Bit, Betty and Insight today. Follow us on Twitter at Paulie Howard at Teddy underscore covers. Time for Big Game Breakdown. As always, live odds, sportsbookreview.com. South Regional, the late game, UCLA and Kentucky. Pick 165 and a half the total. They bombed the under earlier in the week, a four-point move on the under. Oddity of the modern times here. Monk, Fox, Ball, either on the Elite Eight or going pro. UCLA won 97-92 at Rupp Arena December 3rd. Bruins won the boards. It was close, though, 40-37, to but shot much better, 53% to 41%. Ball wasn't great, 14 points, 6 rebounds, 7 assists, but 6 turnovers. And Calipari said after the game, they manhandled us, physically manhandled us. You don't see that very often, especially in this building, end quote. You don't see that much from UCLA. They're considered soft, and they didn't play much defense either. Yeah, I mean, you know, look at the picture, you know. You got to be real ballsy to shush the crowd in Lexington one month into your freshman season. But Lonzo already knew uh, he could back that up, and that was just a month in. But you talked about the guys going pro here. Yeah, the Frosh, Fox, Monk, Ball, they're all one and dones. Leaf, I think he will maybe a one and done. Adebayo could be gone. The sophomore, Isaiah Briscoe, going to be gone. So uh, this is a breeding ground for... NBA players next year, even though none of them have a lick of experience uh, at the collegiate levels. Look, both these teams had their season turn around after losses forced them to start focusing on defense instead of NBA contracts. You remember uh, when UCLA had those two bad losses uh, over a five-day span? They got blown out at home by Arizona, gave up 96 in that game, and then USC beat them across town. Uh, they gave up 84 in that game. Well, since that time, we're talking about a team that's 12-1. and one. Their only loss came to the aforementioned Arizona Wildcats in the Pac-12 tourney. They did win at Arizona in that span. And UCLA's improvement, all about the defensive side of the basketball. Alford threw in some zone because they're a step slow on defense. Don't stay in front of opposing players well off the dribble. Still not great. Ranked 77th for the full season. 15th in forcing turnovers. 256 at guarding the three line. But at least they got better. Back to the first meeting, Kentucky scored 92 points on one of their worst shooting days of the season. 33 of 80 from the field, 8 of 24 on three, 18 of 27 from the foul line. They shot worse only four times all season. We've, been, we've discussed the UCLA offense many times, number two in the nation overall, number one in effective field goal percentage, but also in getting shots off, number six in the nation in pace, shooting in 14.5 seconds. The key is playing fast. And smart back to Alford. Quote: I've said it. It's the one. It's one thing to play up tempo. Another thing to play up tempo and under control. We had nine turnovers in the first two rounds in the tournament. That's unheard of. Playing as fast as we want to play, and that's going to be a big key in the game today as well. End quote. Now, as far as the distraction, most people think he's going to take the Indiana job. Does he have one foot out the door? That hey, they're going to offer him thirty-one million, and he might leave. Well, yeah, for $31 million, you're going to have to listen to what your alma mater is going to tell you, uh, whether you take the job or not. I don't know that Indiana's a better job uh, than UCLA, but of course, uh, at UCLA, you have to win every year, and if you don't, you'll be gone. Indiana, uh, if he wins a little bit, he could be locked into a coach for life a situation. But you say, is it a distraction for UCLA? I'm not convinced that it is. You know, uh, Hamilton and Alford, they're seniors, they're gone. Ball's gone. Leaf may be gone. So that's the key cogs for the team. They didn't really care whether he leaves or not. I'm not convinced that they do. Kentucky 13th in offense, 13th in pace, uh, but the D-rated 8th once they got their players in. 13-0 and since losing to Florida. 10-3 and under in those games. Cal wouldn't mind running with them in this one. That's good to know uh, when you're looking at the total quote. We've got really fast players, so you try to play to your strength. A lot of people have slowed us down. They're, uh, they're not let us. They're not going to let us play fast. Early in the year, we were playing way faster than we are now. Some of that is because of how people are playing us. I'm not sure UCLA will try to slow you down. Let's go. Let's play to 120. I don't think either one of us is going to change how we play too late in the season. End quote. That's a money quote there from uh, Calipari. How do you see it? And it's a money quote that stands in sharp contrast to the way that we've seen the total move on this ball game. And again, when we look at the recent numbers. All right, UCLA, way better defensively now than they were in the first meeting. We look at Kentucky, okay, as you mentioned, their defense is rated number eight. Once uh, everyone's bought in, the last 10 games have been monsters. That game against Florida, where they gave up 88 points. 
They haven't lost since. They're 10 and 3 to the under, and it's been about the defense. So even though we can expect a relatively frenetic tempo in this ballgame, I'm not convinced that we're going to see the scoreboard light up this time that we have in the two meetings over the past two seasons. All right, live odds, sportsbookreview.com. The early game, 4 o'clock Pacific, Butler in North Carolina. Tar Heels 7.5, 153 the total. ACC semifinals against Duke. NC led 56 to 48 with 15 minutes left. They lost the game by 10. Joel Berry may not be UNC's best player, but he's turned out to be their most important player because in that game, Berry was in foul trouble. If for whatever reason, Williams wouldn't bring him back, Dukey's made the big run, got the win. Yeah, <laughs> Barry after the game, quote, it was brutal. I hate that I was on the bench. I put the blame on me. So what happened on Sunday? Well, he played through the ankle injury that he suffered versus Texas Southern in round one. He didn't practice before the Arkansas game. And then he had a really rough day. Two of 13 shooting, only four of seven uh, from the charity stripe, three assists. And frankly, look at the pick. You'll see it real clearly. He was a step slow on defense throughout. Now, the Tar Heels still uh, had that 12-0 closeout. <laughs> they were down by five, ended up winning the game by seven. They had a run not all that dissimilar from what we saw uh, from Xavier uh, last night. But now we're looking at Barry expected to be back at full health. His quote, I'm almost close to 100%. I feel better off the medicine. Last week, I was taking a lot of medicine just to try to get the pain to go away. So throughout the day, I was taking some strong meds now I've only been taking small doses of Tylenol, and without it, I feel pretty good. So Joel Berry at 100%, certainly a good sign for a Tar Heels team that, frankly, wasn't particularly impressive uh, from a conference that wasn't particularly impressive with the ACC going 2-13 and 13 against the number uh, last weekend. Love this program, hell of a team, but Butler did beat a 13 seed and a 12 seed to get here. One of the easiest paths you're going to see to the Sweet 16 for a non-one or a two. They won't be intimidated. November 26, 2014, getting nine. They won by eight the Bahamas tournament. November 20th, 2012, getting nine. Won by 11 in Hawaii tournament. North Carolina winless in both games against Butler over the last five seasons. They've held the Tar Heels to less points per game. Efficiency and offensive rebound percentage than any other opponents combined. In a size mismatch based on height, but not necessarily on toughness. You look at these Butler guys, they're 6'7", 6'8", 6'7". They go about 240 uh, as well, and they're not afraid to mix it up either. And they can bring a 6'10 guy off the bench. Well, that's it. They got Nate Fowler coming off the bench as well, who's 6'10", uh, 240. So they have a decent amount of size, but, you know, the Tar Heels, they're one-trick pony. We've talked about them all year long. They rebound on the offensive glass better than any team in the country. Number one and offer the rebounding margin by a wide margin. Butler, number 68. But the Bulldogs, it's not about getting their own misses in this ballgame. It's about being able to snare the defensive rebounds. They've got to do that here because North Carolina is getting second and third chances. They're going to beat Butler, and they're going to beat them by margin. The other thing Butler's got to do, if they're going to win this game or hang tough throughout, they can't get into a track meet with the Tar Heels. Butler, number 289 in tempo. North Carolina, number 52. Side and total are related in this ballgame, in my opinion. If the Bulldogs are going to hang, it's got to be a relatively low-scoring game. And, you know, one key to the tempo is Butler doesn't turn the ball over. Uh, number 10 in the nation in percentage of possessions that end in a turnover. So they do take great care of the basketball. All right, here you go. Can Carolina get it done? ACC 2-13 and 13 against the spread. So far in the tournament, the covers were against a 16 seed and a 15 seed. Up next, Elite 8 matchups, and we'll look at Elite 8 favorites over the last few years on Sportsbit. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com. Research before you bet. Be sure to check out SBR Picks for the best game predictions, breakdowns, and much, much more. Back on Sportsbit, Betting Insight today. Time for the deep dive. We have early numbers, too, with the Elite Eight. 3 o'clock Pacific on Saturday will be Gonzaga and Xavier. The nightcap will be Oregon and Kansas. Win and five dimes open Kansas five. Look-ahead line was four and a half in some spots. Already bet up to six and a half. You're looking at maybe 158 for the total. Yeah, and again, when we talk about the openers here, remember, the lines are going to be volatile right from the get-go. Right now, the market has settled. Kansas in that six, six and a half range, and 
Uh, I would anticipate, even though the Pac-12 has done so well ATS in this tournament, I can't see the markets going against Kansas here. I would think the sixes more likely to become six and a half than the other way around. Should really be a Kansas home game now. The Jayhawk backers will travel right down the street. They'll find their way to all the Purdue and Michigan tickets. They sell them, get out of town, season's over. And this is, again, we talked about it earlier, 100 points, 90 points, 98 points. But it was a huge win. You show this uh, graphic of uh, largest win in Sweet 16 tournament history. Kansas won by 32 against Purdue. That was the fourth largest win in the Sweet 16. The other three teams couldn't even make the championship game. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Winning big, having the blowout win has not uh, bode well for the team that have done it before. But, of course, Kansas is a different team. It's, I don't know if it's a different era. Louisville had one a couple years ago, and Kentucky had one a couple years ago. But the bottom line for the Jayhawks is that what they did yesterday will have little, little bearing uh, on how much of a margin they win by or don't win by against the Ducks uh, on Saturday. And, you know, it, it's a Kansas team. Uh, their lack of depth at times during the regular season was problematic because the starters had to play heavy minutes all year. But the good news, especially as we get here into March, man, you look at the Jayhawks' chemistry on the floor, it's as good as any team in the country because they haven't had to put all these different parts in there. It's been the same core group all year long. And with I agree with what they said on the broadcast. If Mason and Graham are on top of their game, there's not much you can do. Kudos to Oregon. Maybe Dorsey and Brooks can knock down some threes, but I have a hard time thinking Oregon can can hang in this one. Kansas is just on fire and too good. Too many weapons. Yeah, I mean, Oregon's very fundamentally sound. They have that team movement on offense that have a natural point guard. Kansas, one of the best point guards in the country, and Frank Mason, maybe the best point. I mean, well, no, Paul's pretty good. There's some good point guards in the draft this year. Uh, but the bottom line is that that may help the Jayhawks dictate the game flow. And, of course, this will be a virtual home game for Kansas. All right, here we go. Gonzaga and Xavier. Gonzaga yet to get the money. They open as high as 10 in Vegas, sitting as eight as we record this early Friday morning. Xavier closes zone out on a 12-2 run, plus 63 ATS in the three tourney wins. And Goss, it's a huge issue now. 12-42 of 42 in the tournament, nine turnovers, 10 assists. Yeah, I mean, Gonzaga has not yet played a good game in the big dance. Now, Xavier may have a size issue versus the Zags, but you know what? They just had to deal with the exact same thing in knocking off Arizona. And yes, there was something fraudulent in the sense that they closed out the game on a 12-2 run, and Arizona gave it away. But when you're talking about a team that has covered the spread by more than 20 points per game in three tournament wins, a team that is now playing in the, you know, this is their fourth Sweet 16, first Elite Eight, but the fourth time they've been playing on the second weekend, they've been here and they've covered the number in all of those games following the opening weekend. Xavier, a team I'm not looking to sell short. I didn't like the celebration after the win against Arizona, but uh, with Chris Mack, I, I don't think that they're going to be drinking and partying and loving life. I think they're going to be prepping for a chance to go to the Final Four. And Trevon blew it. 75 points, 12 rebounds, 6 assists so far here in the tournament. That leads us to money time, play of the day. Uh, we got to take the points with Xavier. They're on a free roll. All the pressure's on Gonzaga. Will Goss show up? Will Karnowski get it done? Again, Xavier doesn't have to win the game. Keep it close. Uh, plus uh, eight, plus eight's available. We recommend plus seven or better. Xavier on a free roll, maybe to shock the world and get to the final four. Again, Fuse never been there. Gonzaga's never been there. Uh, finally, someone's going to make the final four of these two programs. But all the pressure on Gonzaga, and we'll take the points with Xavier. How about the history here with some with the Elite Eight favorites over the years? Uh, Elite Eight favorite spread category, one to three points, 10 and 18, three and a half to six and a half, 13 and 14. Total, as you look down the line here, 29 and 43. Yeah, Elite Eight chalk has not been the way to go <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. And it's been bad in every role. The short chalk's been bad. The medium chalk's been bad. The big chalk's been bad. And it's no surprise you're going to see teams fight to the final possession when they have an opportunity to go to the final four. And you're going to see the teams that look good in the Sweet 16. The money's going to come on them. When you look at the matchups, the potential matchups, what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, four and a half on Kansas. And now, lo and behold, what is it? You know, six and a half uh, over Oregon. 
uh, when the Five Dimes posted potential matchups uh, for uh, the West region. Uh, the number was Gonzaga minus 7 against Xavier. What happened? We saw that open as high as 10, even though it's been bet down to 8. So you do see some of this line inflation when it comes to the chalks uh, in Elite 8 games. And that has been at least a part of the reason why the dogs have been so good in this round. And again, this is not a short-term trend. Thanks for checking out Google Hangout every Thursday, 8 o'clock Pacific, powered by you, Wager. And we'll be back every Thursday to talk whatever you want, any questions. And next week, we'll know the final four, and we'll preview baseball. Big show coming up. Tell your friends. Have a good weekend. Thanks for watching. Sports Bit. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com. <laughs>